Hey guys, it's Monday. We're here in the Creative Vibe Studios and I really, I'm trying to like keep it together because it is so crazy. When Have you ever like had so many thoughts in your head that you can see it so clear that you just don't know where to begin or what to do? And today we're going to talk about how to prepare for the answers that are coming, right? You know, when you pray and you pray and you pray and you are sitting back watching and seeing all of the things start to unfold right before your eyes. Let me tell you, it's exciting. <laughs> it's because it's so amazing. It's so, so amazing. So today I'm going to talk to you about a couple of things that you can do to help manifest and prepare while you're waiting. Because waiting, the waiting guys, the waiting Hard. You can right. wait and wait and wait, but also it's about what you do in the meantime and what are you doing to prepare to be ready for that next job, that next career move, that next business opportunity, that next house that you're going to live in and build. It's crazy the things that your brain can come up with. And I like to believe if you can see it, you can believe it, right? It can happen. So we're going to talk about how can you manifest and prepare while you're waiting. Here we go. So I also wanted to bring you in a little differently today. We're going to just work in the office and I want, I want to show a couple of things to you that I use, some tools that I use, some ways that I have been training my brain to manifest and to think positively and to generate the energy to prepare and how it is so, so easy for us to get sidetracked if we don't have a tool or resource to, or plan or, or structure or schedule, you got to plan it out, right? So if you don't have these things in place, you're kind of just winging it, which I get a lot of people like to fly by the seat of their pants and it makes them feel good. But if you're like me and you need some type of stability, you need security, you need structure. Did I say structure? We have to not only structure our lives at work, we also have to structure our personal life so that we can get and move and be the best versions of ourselves. And that's why the Better Me Challenge has been so life-changing for me because that's what I've been doing. I have been changing my mindset. I've been evolving, making bigger and better choices that will also allow me to see things differently, right? Once I was able to break my vision into two different options, plan A, plan B. Listen, we made it all the way to plan G. <laughs> Has anybody else got to plan G? Like, this is crazy. I'm at plan G and I'm still smiling. Let me just show you how I do it. One of the things I've been working on is just preparing and fine tuning my business outline and what it is that I do and how I can show up for these new opportunities. So if I'm manifesting a new partnerships and getting these bigger jobs so that I can have and live the way that I want to, how better to do that than to prepare and get organized? So I want to encourage you guys to get organized too. If you have to use Canva like I do, you can put your ideas here. This is a tool that I use for all my clients. It's called a business blueprint. But if you're doing personal goals or personal branding, you can follow the same kind of outline. And I'll walk you through what this is. But this is really for my business so that I know the things I want to do and my capabilities. I mean, if I had a list, you guys know, if you write down all the things you're capable of doing, you'll be all over the place. Have you ever watched a like a, um, a master chef or actually re restaurant impossible or something like that, where they go into the restaurant and the restaurant has a menu that's this thick, just because you love it. And somebody's grandma came in and said they love it. Doesn't mean it needs to be on the menu, right? So when you're offering your services to people and trying to really get them to buy into what you're doing, narrow it down, niche it down. And I learned this over years because I, you'll get tied up in doing a lot of things that you don't want to do and taking on smaller projects or bigger projects that maybe you don't have time or capacity for, or you're working with the wrong people and they rub you the wrong way and they're just not nice. And so the environment and the energy is negative. When you narrow it down, you can be more in charge of what it is that you want to do. So, and that's what I've 
trying to prepare and manifest for so that when I get the right position or I get the right client to work with that will expand and open more doors for my business, I'll be able to say, hey, these are the things I do. This is what I don't do. And when you're manifesting, you want to manifest the positive. You want to prepare for the positive things that you can possibly do and to be able to bring that to the forefront without having going into it is really, really good. So being prepared is what I want you to think about this week while you're manifesting. How can you get organized and really, really fine tune your vision for whatever it is? Like, let's say if you're looking for a new place or you're looking for a new promotion, visualize yourself in that position. What is it that you'll have to do, right? Here's where you're going to write your one liner and say, here's how I can help X, Y, and Z because this is missing and I'm the missing piece, right? When you visualize that and you're able to completely like write it down and have it in a good place, you can feel confident because it makes sense. And when you spend time writing content (laughs) or writing just in general, guess what? You get better at it and you can fine tune those words so that when you do have the opportunity for that interview, for that one-on-one time to pitch your idea or to say, hey, you know what? I'm really looking forward to talking to you about this opportunity. You can have your ideas together and not seem as if you are kind of like hoping and praying that they pick you or maybe you can choose me for this position. No, we want you want people to say, "Listen, I provide a DIY startup package for brand new entrepreneurs or people who are in business or if you're a CEO, I can help you on different levels." Whatever your niche is, you want to be able to have all of this outlined so that you can really help other people and help yourself when you get that opportunity to talk about your business or talk about your goals or talk about your career, you are prepared and it's out in the world because now this is a document. This is something you can share. You can send out an email and you don't have to sound like you're getting it together because you've already got it together because you're prepared, right? The next one we're going to talk about is visualizing and how this is a process that is pretty It's very special to me because it's part of my growth journey and part of my transformation from corporate world to entrepreneurship. And this is a seven step formula for manifesting your dreams. And I hope that you can relate to this process of thinking about how to visualize and set goals that correlate with your vision. So check it out. The power of visualization. Let me tell you, I'm such a visual person anyway, but even if you're not, sometimes you have to pull it out. And I want to talk to you real quickly about this before I show you my vision board and my Pinterest board for the way that I'm manifesting my move, right? I want to move or have this space for Creative Vibe Studios or have this space for me to live in that really, it just has evolved and it speaks directly to all the things that I love. So how do we do that? How do you manifest your dreams? So a long time ago, when I before I even like God was working on me, I was really in a place where I just didn't know what was happening next. I had already quit my job, my corporate job. I had already like made some bad decisions within that, like moving and taking positions and doing listening to the wrong people. And I at this time didn't have a job. And I thought, oh, it would be so easy for me to just start my business and get back out here and start making some money. No, it's not easy. (laughs) And now today, that was about 13, 14 years ago when I was in this place. And so I remember waking up at like, like I feel like it was like way early in the morning because Jalen was a little girl. She was asleep in her room. I was in my room and I woke up and I just grabbed my notebook and I just started writing. I wrote down these seven words, epiphany, insanity exhale, synced. And I don't know that I wrote synced until after. I think I wrote something like um, organize or um, say yes or something like, um, like, 
I have to think about that because I don't know that th this came after because I had to make it an acronym because it just was didn't make sense, right? <laughs> so I had to make it make sense, right? And so recognize, believe, and then live. And these are the seven steps to, for me, that I've been using for manifesting my dreams because your dreams and your ideas change and evolve, right? This time last year, I had different goals and now I'm able to set multiple goals and visualize separate ideas instead of just focusing on one, right? When you put all of your eggs in one basket, if that one if that one basket breaks, guess what? You've lost all of your ideas. So what I'm working on is manifesting multiple ideas and being able to go in different directions as needed because a lot of the times we've been talking about this is you don't know what's going to happen next, especially if you just have faith and you're being still and you're allowing God to lead you. If you're taking control, you may know what's going to happen next, but you're pushing the ball forward and you're doing all the work. And that can be hard because... You can't control the things in the way that other people behave or react or the opportunities that are open. And if you're pushing your way, you might be putting too much effort into something that you need to let God handle. Make sense? So what we're going to do is we're going to manifest these dreams and we're going to make things happen by understanding what your big idea is, right? And then thinking about how can you can control this insanity, right? Things get crazy when you try to take a step back, when you try to really breathe and let God handle it. Things, the world just starts to go a little cuckoo. And being able to realize the insanity and manage that is a huge piece. And this, what I've realized over the last 13, 14 years is that most people don't get past this insanity, right? You give up because it's too crazy. It's too hard. It's, think about if you go to the gym, right? You're like, I'm going to go to the gym and I got my new outfit and my new sneakers and I'm ready to go. The insanity of setting that alarm, getting up early, or bringing all your clothes to work to go to the workout gym at your office. And how do you have to change clothes? Like, it's insanity. <laughs> and you can talk yourself out of your dreams and out of your goals if you don't know how to have emotional control about your feelings and the things that are happening around you. So your big ideas first, controlling that insanity. And then when you get those two pieces in place, you're able to really exhale. And this is when you know that you're slightly letting go and you're able to breathe a little bit because you can feel that hedge of protection. You can feel that you are in the right place and you know that you got to let some things go. And when you do that, listen, I, this happened to me during this 75 day better me challenge, because when I first started this, I did not have the, the weight lifted or the clarity or the understanding that I do today. And when you let that go, you can breathe <laughs> like you will exhale. And that's what this is all about is finding the balance that you need in your life. The fourth thing is saying yes, not can't every day. And that ties into your goals, right? Because if you set these goals and you, you have the expectation, you, yes, you, only you can be the person that has to be held accountable. And you have to say yes to the things that you used to say no to that big, scary vision, that big, scary idea, getting up at five o'clock. Oh, I'm not a morning person, so I'm not getting up. You have to say, yes, I can't. I want to lose weight or I want to get in shape. I want to get this new position. I've got to say yes to getting up early to working on my business plan. I've got to say yes to getting up early to have more time in the afternoon to do things that I need to. If you've got to get up to do something like you have to say yes to the things that you used to say no to period. Right. The fifth thing is then you have to be able to recognize how far you've come, right? When you're manifesting, it, a part of that is pushing those negative thoughts out of the way, which they will creep in, especially when things are going crazy in the insanity part, when you're trying to breathe and let God handle it, all of the thoughts and negativity that's going to be coming at you, whether it's a phone call, a text, an email, something's going to trigger you and you're going to be forced to have emotional control and be in a place where you can understand why those things are happening and know that they're happening, but they don't have to happen to you and you don't have to respond in a negative way. 
And the best way to do that is to realize and recognize how far you've come because you're stronger, you're wiser, you have things in place, you have boundaries set that you are not allowing the same things to happen again. So you can celebrate how far you've come by the way that you have set your goals and you're achieving things, the way that you have changed your mindset, so many things. And this is a huge part that I think needs to happen throughout this process. When you are visualizing all the things, you have to remember that you deserve it. You have to remember that this is why you have been given this opportunity for this new job or given this opportunity to have the home that you've been wanting to have for your family or to even start your business. So celebrating along the way is very, very important. And that's why you have to recognize where you are in the moment versus where you could be and where you were, right? And then you have to believe it. Like when I talk about the confidence that you have to have and that you gain from manifesting and from preparing and from really sitting back and letting God do his thing because it's already done and accepting that you can really then start to see and visualize all the pieces come into place. And that's what's super exciting. That's where you can have the faith just building up in you and for you to set out into the world and be prepared for what's to come because you believe it, you know it, and you accept it. And that leads us to the seventh step where now you can live it. This is your life. This is happening. It's uh, you are like blessed beyond measure and you have the ability to let other people see what can happen when you manifest your dreams, when you take time to stick a step back, to really start preparing, to start drilling down all of the things and changing, making changes in your life that are not for you, that you can really start to push your future to a better place, right? So as you are visualizing what you want to do next, make sure you're thinking about these seven steps to help you get to where you need to be. So I'm going to share my screen with you guys so that you can see some of the things that I use. And I just want to be able to walk you through what it is that you can do right now to start preparing and how there's so many different ways that you can use to visualize your idea. One thing that I did over the weekend was really just close my eyes and then visual, visually see myself like walking into this new space. How does it look? How does it feel? Where? How do my things, my, my belongings look and feel? What new pieces am I going to bring in? How am I going to get that? What's it going to look like when it's up on the wall? What is the furniture going to look like? all of the things. And that's what you have to do when you're thinking about what your next step is. And so I want to talk to you about not only the power of preparation, but the power of visualization and how important it is to take action and what you can do in the meantime, while you're waiting to keep moving the needle forward. I always say this, I feel like I've said this a lot in the last couple of videos, but we have to keep moving that, keep that momentum going, keep that ball moving forward for your goals, right? If you, even if you have a big picture goal, what happens is we are not being realistic enough to know that I don't have the capacity, I don't have the budget, I don't have the means or the creativity or the team to get some of those things done. And it's important that when you are trying to bring your ideas to life, that you are putting all the pieces that you need in place. And that's the preparation part, right? So you can visually see things, but I can see this apartment. I can see this business. I can see all of the things. I can see me doing it. I know what I'm going to do. I, I can visualize what my day to day is going to look like. But if I don't have a plan, when I get that opportunity, how am I going to execute? How am I going to take action? And I want to share with you three tools for preparation, for visualization, and for action. And this is what it's going to look like right here. So one of the things you can use that is super cool, especially if you are trying to get ideas for space, if you're looking for ideas for outfits, if you're looking for ideas for your next career and your position, you can create a Pinterest board that will house all of your different ideas. So we're going to use my 
moving into a new space as an example. So I have this board, it's called My Daily Inspo, and I have different things that I save on here. So I have curb and patio inspo, I have living room, art and aesthetics, I have kitchen, doors and sections, and bedroom. And then of course they wanna tell you all the other things that you can do right now and save into your board. So it, it just is never ending. So you can get lost and really find a way to disconnect from the chaos if you have the ability to use Pinterest. Now, I'm on my desktop, but you can use this on your phone. You can use it on your iPad. You can download the app and start creating inspiration for whatever it is that you're working and striving for. So I want to remind you to do just that. Okay, so let's get into this. When you create your Pinterest board, you're going to just title your board, whatever your inspo is or however you're looking to collect information, title that, and then it lets you organize. So when I am visualizing, like I said, I, I close my eyes and I can walk through this space and I can see my business, I can see my happy place, I can see, you know, plants and herbs and I can see myself cooking in the kitchen. I can see all of these things. All you have to do is just start looking for other ways to bring your idea to life. And the cool thing about having a Pinterest board is that you can save the inspiration and then it also includes the link. So let's say if you want to buy these planters, you have a link here to get the inspiration or get the information for purchasing them for whatever it is that you're looking to do, right? So this is my board for curb and patio, but there's so many things that you can do and um, be able to build a inspiration or motivation. So maybe you're trying to work out and you want to try all these different recipes or you want to try these different workout sessions and have some really cute workout clothes. You can create an inspo board and visualize yourself getting up and going to the gym and visualize yourself using these weights or doing these exercises or making these yummy meals. I actually had a recipe board for a long time and I still add things to that. But now because I've got my favorite go-tos, and I'm kind of in between going and traveling. I don't always have a, a space that I just go to and have my food in. So it makes it a little bit more difficult. But if you have a Pinterest board, you can just pop up in your, um, your board and get that recipe that you've saved and make it for dinner or make it for friends or whatever it is. Maybe it's a cocktail. And you have your board here that's got your inspiration and got some motivation for you to keep everything organized. So it's really super fun and lots of ways that you can do to just disconnect to keep visualizing your goals and visualizing your ideas by creating a board that has all of those things. And you can also use Canva to create and design a, I think I have one open. Let's see, where did it go? Modern chic vision board. So you can take those images from your vision board and or from your Pinterest board and then just drop them over here and create something really cool. They have lots of templates that you can pick and choose too. So this part, just have some fun, right? If you're looking to change your look or change your style and you don't really know and you may not have the ability to go hire a stylist or do all those fancy things, but you can start to pull pieces together that you like by creating a vision board, right? You can use your vision board to outline the things that you want to manifest. If that's the new place, like I'm looking for, here's my new space. Here's where I'm going to work. Here's where I'm going to live. It's going to look like this X, Y, and Z. You can put your husband on here. Like you might be looking for your man. You, he might be looking for you. You you never know. You can start to manifest things on your vision board and just have some fun. So I encourage you to do this, especially if it starts to feel stressful. What you don't want to do is be stressed about manifesting or visualizing. It should be a fun distraction and a way to disconnect from the reality of what you're waiting for to happen. If you, especially if you have to wait for other people to have the say so, to, to give you the money to, you know, whatever it is that's keeping you or that you're waiting for. And then maybe you're just waiting for God. And this is a great way to prepare for that blessing because you can use all these tools to start to make your ideas come to fruition. So when it happens, you have all this stuff to reference and you can say, oh, I manifested this. I made it happen. And it happened just as I saw it in my head. 
And I hope that this will help you to see how important it is to use your resources and use tools to bring your dreams to life. So I hope that this has helped you kind of think about what you can do while you're waiting. It has really helped me and being able to kind of have a plan A and a plan B in my head and be okay with those things has really helped me feel a little bit more positive about the outcome. Like if this happens, great, here's what I'm going to do. And I'm grateful for it. I'm manifesting all the results. I can see the success in this manner, but I can also see if this happens because this didn't or vice versa, right? I can see great things happening in my plan B. And I want you to be full of the positive energy of the potential of what can happen, right? A lot of times we get stuck in shoulda, coulda, woulda, it didn't, and who did what and why it didn't happen. Instead of taking ownership, taking time to plan, to prepare, to manifest, to show up and be our best version. Because the more you work on you, the easier this part will be and it won't be as stressful, right? So you don't have the anxiety. Like my anxiety level is like at a two, like clearly totally different from how I've been feeling in the past. And I'm excited about plan A, B, C, and being able to pivot with a positive attitude is really bringing me a lot of joy. So stay tuned. We're in nine, week nine right now. Yesterday started week nine and you're hearing this about week eight. Just wait to see what the next two weeks plus a couple of days because it's 75 day challenge and we're at day 56, I believe. Yeah over halfway and it's so much more to come and I cannot wait to see the end results and just really be able to celebrate all that. So until next week, I'll talk to you later. Bye.